hello friends welcome to gyas how are you i hope you are doing well so friends as you know that on our channel we are covering the syllabus of upsc civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains so currently we have friends 10 series that target your prelims and one series that target your mains so in this video we will be covering the this prelims oriented series that we have so in this lecture we will be covering international relations so today is the first lecture of international relation so we will discuss mcqs of uh, the international relation related topics so friends what we do in these 10 series we daily cover two topics with the uh, 10 to 15 mcqs of each topic so in this manner daily 10 to 30 uh, sorry 20 to 30 mcqs of of two topics are discussed separately so in this manner uh, we will uh, continue to do so till 31st may so why the date chosen has been 31st may because on 2nd june is your prelims of upsc csc 2019 so let's see what are the questions of today's lecture that is international Relati uh, relations lecture number 1 so the first question is consider the following about the uh, south asian association for regional cooperation first it was founded along with the non alignment movement Second, SARC Secretariat is based in New Delhi to facilitate effective cooperation between members. Third, Sri Lanka and Pakistan joined SARC in 2008 after the global recession picked up. Fourth is uh, Afghanistan is not a member of SARC summit, so we have we have to choose the correct statement. So let me tell you, friends, that all of these statements are wrong. It was not founded along with the non alignment movement. It was found quite uh, later, and also about the second statement. Second statement is also wrong because SARC secretariat is in Kathmandu and not in New Delhi. Regarding third statement, friends, Sri Lanka and Pakistan were one of the uh, founding members of SARC, and they didn't join in two two thousand eight. So they were actually the founding members. And Afghanistan is 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 also a very essential part of SARC summit. So the, all the statements are wrong. So answer would be D. That is none of the above. So here is the explanation. So it was the idea was proposed by the Zia ul Rahman, the then president of Bangladesh, on May second, nineteen eighty, and uh, seven founding countries had met for first time in April nineteen eighty one. and then in 1985 85 they created sarc charter and uh, non alignment movement actually belongs to 1960s so one would be wrong so also i as i have told you that the first sarc summit held in dhaka and uh, the secretariat is established in kathmandu and it is not not in uh, in uh, in in new delhi regarding uh, statement 3 as i have told you that this is wrong because this uh, sri lanka and pakistan were one of the founding members of this uh, sarc summit and uh, the members currently are eight that is bangladesh bhutan india maldives nepal pakistan sri lanka and afghanistan and the observer states are australia china european union japan iran mauritius myanmar south korea and united states let's move on to the second question the second question is voting shares in the united nations generally assembly are distributed between the members on the basis of a population b economic size c contribution to un d all members have equal votes so here we have been asked that uh, united nation general assembly in it in it how how the voting has been shared among the member member countries so let me tell you friends that there is no particular criteria basically it all the members have one vote that is they share equal vote the of one so answer is d so this is the solution is d so friends uh, there is the also some issues with this uh, this form of voting because there are considerable number of number of countries that that have small population but they they have they share they they have one vote and similarly we can see the example of china and uh, china and india which have considerable uh, number of uh, people living in their respective countries but they also have only the one vote so it is uh, <clears throat> quite uh it, sometimes it is argued that the united nation the in the united nation reforms it is also said that voting should be on the basis of population so the solution is d that all members have equal vote so basically voting on important matters is done done uh, is approved uh, if for example if a important matter is to be approved then then it is done by two thirds majority relating to peace or for that matter security or budgetary concerns and election admission suspension of expel or expulsion of members but on general members uh, on general general questions uh, the things are decided simply by majority so each member country has one vote so these uh, let me tell you friends that the assembly res resolutions are not binding in on the members and uh, this is about your uh, 
explanation so friends uh, why why is the issue th why there has been talked about why the reforms are being talked about talked about because uh, because uh, some important decis decisions are taken by two thirds majority and and this co co creates a uh, problem that uh, sometimes the important issues they are approved by two thirds majority even uh, with, with, with countries having equal vote share and and s uh, smaller countries having equal vote with larger countries and then the thing resolution is approved by two th by a two third vote so this is the issue so let's move on to the third question the third question is consider the following statements the secretary general selection is subject to the veto of any of the five member uh, permanent members of the security council uh, reason is the secretary secretary general is appointed by the general assembly only after the recommendation of security council so we have to consider the statement so let me tell you friends that uh, this both a and r is correct and assertion is uh, sorry r is the correct explanation of assertion so the secretary general is basically the subject uh, his selection is subject to the veto of any of the five permanent members of the security council and also security generally is appointed by the general assembly only after the recommendation of security council and uh, here the solution would be a so a is correct and r is an appropriate explanation of a so in a way secretary general's uh, selection depends upon the uh, the con consensus of united nations security council members that are five countries uh, so this this is implies that the, essentially they choose the secretary general so this is also an issue in the international law reform let's move on to the next question <clears throat> Fourth question is which of the following countries are member of the G20? First Australia, second Saudi Arabia, third Canada, fourth China, fifth Japan. So let me tell you, friends, uh, that uh, China is obviously a member of uh, uh, G20, and there is no question that Japan cannot be the uh, uh, cannot be its part. So simply by using elimination method, you can say uh, the 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 answer is D. That is one, two, three, four, and five. So all of these are the members of G20 group grouping. So this answer is D. So here is justification. So group one group two group three group four and group five countries are shown here so they are basically in g20 is an international grouping of of the 20 major economies so it was founded in 1999 with the aim of studying grouping and promoting high level discussions of policy issues pertaining to the promotion of international financial stability and it seeks to address the issues that go beyond the responsibilities of any one organization so this is about your fourth question so let's move on to the fifth question fifth question is how is china pakistan economic corridor important to china first the project will shorten the route for the china's energy imports from the middle east second it will strengthen chinese presence in the arabian sea so we have to choose the correct statement let me tell you the friends that both of these statements are correct because uh, now the currently the china imports uh, a considerable amount of its energy from middle east and now it passes through 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 the malacca strait that is in that is in indian ocean uh, so the, the kind of uh, it 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 creates a kind of a, a long distance for China to uh, to to cross this Malacca Strait and then go in, to go through this uh, a, a Southeast Southeast Asia and then then it the energy comes to its country. But but through this uh, by building China Pakistan economic corridor which passes through the Pakistan occupied Kashmir, uh, there has been a considerable reduction in the in the in the route uh, for for the China's energy imports from the Middle East and also friends it will strengthen Chinese presence in. In Arabian Sea. Uh, so the both of these are correct, and India is particularly concerned about regarding two things. That is, it it this corridor passes through the, uh, uh, the, uh, the the territory that is claimed by India as its essential part. So it it, it undermines our territorial integrity, and also um, we have the issue if obviously uh, China enhances its presence in the Arabian Sea because Arabian Sea is um, is is very near to us. So we are actually our western coast is is, is bordering the Arabian Sea, and also. Uh, in Pakistan, China is building water ports. So, if there is the, 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 the if the, the Chinese pres presence increases, then it is of strategic concern for us. So, the solution is C. That both in one and two is correct. So, currently, Strait of Malacca provides China with the, its shortest maritime access to Europe, Africa, and Middle East. But now. Through this, uh, the, uh, this uh, proposed China-Pakistan economic corridor, the this the the, the route will will re reduce the uh, kind of route uh, route length for, from from China to Middle East and also Europe and other countries. So this is about your China-Pakistan economic corridor, which will connect Xinjiang uh, with the Pakistan's Gwadar port located at the shores of Arabian Sea. 
This is about your fifth question. Let's move on to the sixth question. Sixth question is Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations estimates that 25% of the world's food crops are affected by mycotoxins. The most notorious of these are aflatoxins. They are produced by. So, friends, this is by mistake. This question has been included in the international relation. Actually, it should be kind of. Uh, uh, in, it, 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 should, it should be a question on. Uh, uh, we can say uh, uh, environment or for that matter science and tech so let me tell you friends that uh, yeah this uh, food and agriculture organization please note it that it is an organization of united nation and it estimates that 25 percent of food, uh, food crops are affected by mycotoxins so they are produced by basically whom so this question has been asked so let me tell you friends these mycotoxins are produced by fungi d that is uh, d is the answer so solution is d so they it is a, it is a kind of poisonous substance they are produced by certain molds found primarily in grain and nut crops but are also known to be ancillary grape juice and uh, apple and other produce so mycotoxins can penetrate into the parts of food that are not visibly moldy as well so this is about your uh, this question so one of the uh, types of this uh, Mycoto mycotoxins is afl aflatoxin so and uh, it is produced by molds of asper uh, aspergillus gen genus <coughs> So this is about your sixth question. Let's move on to the seventh question. The seventh question is New York Declaration 2016 was adopted to strengthen the regime of A. Refugee and Migrant Production B. Climate Change Mitigation C. Global Financial Architecture D. Cross-Border Trade and Investment So let me tell you friends the New York Declaration 2016 is associated with Refugee and Migrant Protection in which the United Nations General Assembly member nations adopted this New York Declaration in which it was, uh, it was kind of uh, resolved to, to to provide protection to the refugees and migrants that uh, that that move to different countries so the answer is a so basically it this uh, this declaration was adopted uh, by the united nations general assembly in 2016 for the protection of refugees and uh, and and migrants so it is it expresses the political will of the world leaders to protect the rights of the refugees and migrants to save lives and share the responsibility for large movements on a global scale by adopting it un member states are uh, making bold commitments to develop guidelines on the treatment of migrants in vulnerable situations so let's move on to the eighth question eighth question is consider the following about asia pacific economic co uh, cooperation first it is it consists of pacific frame economies second it promotes free trade area through the asia pacific region by promoting common trade standards across the region third it is an affiliate member of g8 fourth all economies have an equal say in epic and decision making is reached by consensus uh, fifth is there are no binding commitments or treaty obligations other than those agreed voluntarily uh, by member economies is on a case to case basis so let me tell you friends that first statement is correct yes this asia pacific economic cooperation it is a kind of economic grouping consists of pacific rim economies so it promotes to uh, it, it 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 aims to promote the free trade throughout the asia pacific region by promoting through by promoting common trade standards across the region let me tell you friends the third statement is incorrect it is not an affiliate member of g8 fourth statement is correct yes uh, the, the all the members have equal say and decision making is reached by consensus and fifth is there are no uh, binding commitments so this statement is also true so all these statements are true so but not the third statement so the answer would be b that is one two four and five so the answer is solution is b so here is explanation so you can see that basically it ensures that good services and investments in people move easily across the borders and uh, and members facilitate this trade through faster comes custom procedures that border more favorable business climates behind the border and aligning regulations and standards across the regions for example apex initiative to synchronize regulatory systems is a key step to integrating the asia pacific economy so a product can be more easily exported with just one set of common standards across all economies so this is about your eighth questions let's move on to the ninth question so this is the last question of today uh, today we are covering only nine questions not ten so in which of the following countries not even a single BRICS summit has been held till date so it is quite easy question friends first brazil second china third russia fourth india let me tell you friends that on all in all these uh, countries the BRICS summit has been held more than once so all all are uh, they all these are incorrect so the statement is uh, 
this uh, uh, all these are uh, in 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 all these a brick summit had held so it has been held in all of the above at least at once so d is the uh, correct answer so the 2011 summit was held in china so it was the first summit to include south africa and please note this this is important sometimes upsc has the habit of asking such, such type of factual things so when was when was south africa included in brick summit so you must uh, know that in 2011 uh, and this brick summit held in china so this south africa was added to 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 this uh, original four, four, four country grouping so brics has a own uh, bank that is new development bank and also it has contingent reserve arrangements they were signed in 2014 in brazil brics summit so brazil in brazil also this brics summit has been held so summit was held in india in 2012 and is happening in october and has happened in october 2016 so the four can't be the answer so obviously 2015 BRICS summit was held in russia ufa so there was also joint summit with the seo eu so this is about your uh, 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 explanation of ninth question so BRICS summit was first uh, this term was first actually used by the goldman sachs in their uh, global economics paper the world needs better economic break so they on the basis of econometric econometric and uh, econo econometrics analysis projecting that the uh, economies of Brazil, Russia, India, and China would individually and collectively occupy far greater economic space and would be amongst the world's largest economies in the next 50 years or so. So this is about your uh, today's lecture friends. If you like the questions, if you like the video, then please like it, share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel and also do not forget to press the bell icon because then only you will get all the important notifications. So friends, if you want to subscribe to the PDF of these MCQs, you can uh, uh, email us at this uh, uh, email ID that is achievees21 at the gmail.com or you can also contact us directly on our WhatsApp number that is 8968426481. So we have a WhatsApp on this number. Uh, number you can connect us personally so obviously friends uh, uh, if you want to subscribe to the pdfs of these mcqs uh, then then you can contact us at the at, at, at this email id or for that matter at this contact number so these um, pdfs will be given to you uh, but but certainly with the, with, the, with the minimum cost which we have kept for the purpose of our motivation so that we can uh, sustain our efforts for helping you people so if you want to subscribe to them you can contact us at this number so why these PDFs are important because at the end of the day you will not be able to see 20 to 30 minute long videos for that matter uh, uh, reading standard books or NCRT so at that time you must have some kind of uh, notes into, from which you can revise uh, revise quickly so these questions these PDFs in the form of question answer format with proper explanation to them uh, they will help you in revision uh, and, and they will help you in quick revision so if you want to subscribe to them you can contact us and lastly friends this is all about today's video do ensure that you subscribe to our channel thank you have a nice day